It's an amazing opportunity to sit here with you, Stine, in your. Thank you very much for accepting this uh, interview request. I'm so glad to speak one of the best players of the women handball. You have been chosen of the best player of the world. Many, many, many titles on the national team. We will go on later. We will also uh, speak about your club achievements, also fantastic results. And of course, there will be an important decision you will share with us because this is the meaning of today's interview. But I do not want to go uh, so fast in advance because it's a, it's a long and big interview. Maybe the, the deepest and the biggest what you are uh, giving in your career. Uh, a bit, let's start in the beginning, Stina, please. Show us uh, and tell us how did you become uh, familiar with handball? What does the meaning? Did there have been any other sports you have been tried or how was the beginning of your career? Well, yeah, it, it all started uh, back in Norway, of course. My mom, she was uh, playing handball uh, and that's basically how I also got introduced to the sport. Um, she was still playing after after I was born and I just loved to, to be in the arena. I was, I was in the arena uh, a lot and uh, I think that the love for the sport, uh, it, came, uh, it came that way. This was the meaning that uh, these nice memories from the childhood are in the arenas and the trainings, I suppose you have been there, that you and also your sister uh, became a player. Yeah, for sure. I think that has a lot to say. It's something about that when when you are in an environment where, where yeah, in my case, Humble was was such a big part. Then, uh, then of course, it's something that you that you very often continue to also find some liking in, and that I sure did. Um, it was uh, your name is one of the best playmaker ever, or you are your name is mentioned around the best playmakers ever. But did you play it always like a playmaker or some other position you started? I started as a left back actually, uh, yeah, back in the days when I was uh, very young. So uh, in this team, then uh, then I was mostly the the left back. Uh, of course, when when some of the other girls start to to grow a little more, then it it felt quite natural that I was uh, put into the middle as well and yeah, have more this type of playmaker role. But uh, but yes, that's uh, I started on on the side. And uh, of course, you are much more better with, uh, with the playmaker position right now, so it's more fe comfortable for you. Yeah, one hundred percent. Now it's my position, and uh, and I don't know. I always loved uh, this this whole playmaker role. One thing is to to yeah shoot and score, and that can be great, of course. But I always loved this overview of the game, and that that you get the best from from the playmaker position. Handball developed a lot during the last uh, decades and also it became much more faster, much more uh, physical also. And I have to uh, apologize for the question in advance also, but because of your hate, because you are not the tallest player ever played handball, was there any kind of big, uh, problem why you faced with that, that your hate was a problem or, or could you leave this as, a, as an advantage? Maybe not as strong as, as hate, but uh, no doubt that I that I heard all of these question marks around if if I could ever reach the top or if I could ever be good. Um, of course, I I played in, in a good team already as a very young girl, and somehow we were yeah we were seen as as good already then. Uh, but uh, I heard when they started to create these junior national teams, there there were uh, were someone who who said that no, the, she's too small. That's not gonna work. I also heard it later in my career, so uh, no doubt that this voice has been a little on the side. But um, I don't know. It's something about uh, finding your own way, and and I'm of course sitting here now knowing what I know. I'm I'm extremely happy that that didn't affect me, and I I always kind of felt. I was very humble on the things that I know that I might not ever be able to do uh, and then instead try to focus on what I actually can do and, and uh, the strengths that I, that I could manage to get instead. Maybe this made you a bit more dedicated and may, maybe more focused about achieving something great. Yeah, maybe. But I also think that, at least for me, a lot of this type of motivation, it comes a lot from, from myself. Like I, I enjoy a lot to to kind of have goals and to work for something and and I'm very hard on myself which sometimes has been I think it, it has made me who I am in the best ways and it's also been maybe the things that have been the most difficult for me so it's uh, it's yeah it's kind of a two-way thing but I'm but I have no doubt that that also made me good. After every game here in Europe or in the Norwegian national team or wherever you play 
it's easy to say that you are an idol for a lot of uh, students, a lot of young uh, girls who want to play handball. But who was your idol? Who was your your mother, maybe, or someone else? Yeah, and I think that it, it all started with my with my mom in that way. And that's for sure. Then along the road, of course, you always see some players that you that you put a little extra highly. Um, Bojana Popovic was one of those that I saw quite early that I thought was a very com complete player. Of course, the queen of, of the club I'm uh, sitting right now, Gjör, Anita Gerbitz, she was also one of those that I looked at and yeah, could admire in that way. And um, so it was somehow a mix of finding inspiration and admire things, but also find my own way, which was always very important for me also because I was um, similar in some ways, but also very different in, in other ways. You live your dreams, let's say, because uh, you like handball and you are a professional handball player. And we can say that in the last um, 15, maybe 20 years, handball has been your life. How difficult or how good is it? Oh, no, but it's, of course, an, an amazing everyday life. No doubt about that. To be able to have your, your hobby as, as your job, that's, it's, a, it's such a privilege. But also like for every single step you take and for, for every single new thing you manage to achieve, uh, there also comes pressure. And, and that's something I felt a lot on, on my body as well. And okay, this pressure is there, but it's still that you also put this bar even higher and higher for yourself. And like I said already, I can be quite rough on myself and quite hard towards myself. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's an amazing everyday life. Uh, I feel extremely privileged in that way. Uh, but of course also it's, um, it, it also has, has its downsides. And yeah, to always live away from, in my case, for, from family, friends, uh, these things, that, that's also something that counts into the big picture. Knowing your parents a bit, of course I'm lucky to know that also, I have a question because I'm also now a father and mm -hmm. I also have children, which is, which is a fantastic feeling. But of course, um, uh, your father maybe is also have a special role in your, or your parents in a special role in your life because you are really close to your family, I know it, right? What do you think, uh, how proud they are? And then <laughs> do they say it for you uh, often or how it goes in your family? Uh, in our family, it's, uh, first of all, I've always been, and both me and my siblings, we've always been very lucky in the way that we, they support us with everything always. Um, they were taxi driver, drivers when that was needed. My mom was my coach for many years. Like it's been, they've been such a big part of this whole adventure somehow. Um, and yeah, I, I hope and think that they are very proud. Uh, I know that they are, of course. Uh, my mom was kind of always like the rational one, the one who put a little the demands, while my dad was maybe more this supporter and the, the one who, who also like told very directly that he, uh, that he was proud. So, uh, and, and to me, at least, that was the perfect balance because I also think it's important to have this, yeah, to have both. Uh, but what I know anyway is that I always felt like an unconditional support from, from both of them. The interview, what we are shooting right now, is also special here in Gjör. This is the old hall, the venue, the Magwashi Mihai Sport mm -hmm. Hall. And uh, this is your, uh, let's say, the, most pl the place where you visit most in Gjör. Because the trainings for the first team is always happening here and the matches are played in the new Audi Arena. Does it came often to your mind that your international career, the first big achievement, has just it happened only here? It's in 2009 that we are speaking about Junior Euro when Norway, with you and with a lot of other fantastic players, plays a final here in this hall with Hungary mm. and you won a gold medal. Mm. Yeah, for me it, it was uh, it was really here it all begun, like on the big stage. Uh, I think that for sure now when I have my everyday life here, it's easy to kind of forget it. And right now it is my, my training arena somehow. But uh, without any doubt, there's been, there have been many times when I also thought like, this is the hall, you know, this, is, this means a lot to me actually. And, uh, and with the few of the girls that I played with there in 2009, uh, Celia, for example, she's, uh, she's here now as well, uh, Vicky too. So that's also quite special, I must say. And, and we said it quite early that, if we could ever play here, uh, that would be it. And, uh, and we managed, we were lucky enough, good enough, a good mix of both. And uh, it kind of feels like, uh, feels like the, um, the circle is, is closed <laughs> in that way. 
what do you remember from that match? I have been here on mm -hmm. the final. I was then the speaker for the game, and it was. Uh, I remember that it was not possible to to find any tickets. It was full house. Mm -hmm. It was amazing atmosphere, and of course, uh, as it is in Hungary, and the Hungarian national team was here, not for you, but of course you managed to win. How do you remember for that final? Oof! Yeah, I, I really think that that was that was the first time all of us Norwegian girls uh, could really feel what this type of of humble atmosphere was all about. Of course, we had played uh, in front of, of uh, some fullest uh, arenas in Norway as well, but a full arena in Norway, it's something about like, no offense, but it's nothing like a full arena in Hungary. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy to us and in the best way. I think that even though we knew that 99% uh, of this hall were against us, it still kind of lifted us a little and it, it felt it felt incredible and it was honestly a very yeah it, it gave it gave some kind of taste of this uh, of this um, humble culture that you have here in Hungary that was amazing to be honest of course if uh, we follow a bit the, the timeline this was the first big achievement one year later in south korea there was a world championship you also gained um, the gold medal and you were lucky enough that you have been selected in the first uh, time to the big uh, Norwegian adult national team even with not so much roles but uh, you started to show yourself in the international level but even although this uh, two until 2013 you stayed in Norway in your club Stabæk which was uh, a stable point for you in the future and then in 2013 you changed to France to a good club but maybe not the biggest club and most traditional to Isi Paris uh, were there any more chances at that time or why did you choose Isi Paris? Because that was not a common, I mean, the French football was always good, but Isi Paris was, was just a normal club, let's say, with the biggest respect towards them, of course. I think that when, these, when you're supposed to take these decisions, and especially in young age, there are many factors that kind of count in. Uh, for me at that point, I, I started to play myself a little more stable into the national team. Um, I, of course, talked with the, with the coaches, uh, with Turir in this case. Um, and I also, of course, looked at all the, all the factors. Uh, and at that point, I felt that it was very important for me to, to still play a lot, to challenge myself, but maybe not in the way that I was put on the bench. So for me to come to a club like Isipari in this case, where I felt that I was very wanted, I felt that they had a very clear role for me. It was a lot of top class players at that po uh, point playing in the club as well. Even if it wasn't the, the like top Champions League, it was like a solid club. And also just this thing with French handball in general. I thought that that could be really good for me and to, to kind of one challenge myself with a new language and new culture but just as much also the type of handball they play which is more yeah it's not as in Norway we everything is a lot like this you have uh, systems and you follow follow these things and it's it's very solid it's very good but in France it's also it's so much creativity and it's so many players with amazing individual qualities and I and I somehow felt that those type of challenges fitted where I was at that point and also, I mean, of course, respecting a bit the culture where you went, you also learned very good the language in France. Yeah, very good. I'm not sure about that, but <laughs> at least I, I learned like decent French. And uh, now seven years later, it's, it's crazy how much I feel I forgot, but I still understand well and I can say some things. We can say that you are not the one who is uh, giving up a project very early because it has been only uh, counting your first ever club four clubs you mm. have been played for it means a stability for you when mm -hmm. you choose a project yes for sure i i always think that these to have some kind of uh, security to to also give things time uh, and lastly also to to kind of keep a con continuity that's probably what you say in english yes i i think that's extremely important in, in sport and to achieve your own goals but also a team's goals um of course it's it's I was also lucky enough that everywhere I were, I, I, I was very happy as well. Uh, if I wasn't, then of course I would have done differently. But I, I, for me, it was ideal to kind of have this, yeah, this type of, of way. Now I just kindly ask you to remember for that Saturday afternoon in 2017, mm -hmm. in the spring, when Stine, you came to Dior and in a half time of a Champions League game, you have been introduced to the spectators of the club because a big ovation 
What was inside you at that moment? <sighs> Overwhelming, of course. Um, I felt that it was very right to take this next step at this point. I really wanted to play at the highest level uh, in Champions League. Uh, Gjør had always been my dream club, so of course to get the chance from this exact club, uh, it felt a little like, uh, yeah, like a fairy tale at that moment. Uh, I was really nervous <laughs> entering the court, uh, but of course it felt very good, and I felt very welcomed here for from the from the very start. For us at that time, it was quite strange that everyone knows you from the Norwegian national team, but even Champions League, you never played before. It wasn't a bit. Uh, you were, wasn't a bit nervous because of this? That, uh, so you were not uh, thinking about that, did you make the good steps in your career, so you didn't miss nothing? I actually never thought about it that way. Um, I was, I've been, yeah, Norway of course as a national team has always had the top quality. So I always felt that I already managed to, to try myself on this level for multiple years. Uh, I played many finals already, I, uh, yeah, for many years in a row. And with that, I kind of just felt that it was the right and the good next, uh, next step, for, uh, step for me. So of course, like when I was going to play the first game, I, I felt that, <laughs> believe me. But, uh, but yeah, I never had this type of doubt that, that it would be too much. I, I, I thought that it would be, yeah, right. The doubt is a good word because I would like to just uh, ask about it, this word, that uh, there was no doubt in you that Dior is your next place because I suppose at that time when you choose Dior, you had multiple options. Almost everyone would like you to transfer into their team. So how was this uh, opponents when, when Dior was fighting for you? It was a difficult decision for you? Actually, it felt very easy <laughs> at that point. It, um, you didn't know this, you know, yeah, because <laughs> of we course. had a little bit difficult. <laughs> yes. yes, no, but at this moment for me, when, when that offer came, uh, there were also some Norwegian players here, so I also knew that I had some kind of security, that I knew a few people. Uh, then, uh, it, uh, yeah, it was actually quite easy. You mentioned some names like idols among Anita Gerbitz also. And then in 2017 summer when you came, you just met with one of your idols, Anita Gerbitz or Eduard Amari Monique mm -hmm. Gotor. I can continue all the names in the locker room from that season who were exactly on just one day to your teammates. How was the feeling to step into the locker room or, 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 or be a part of this team on the first days? Yeah, I was just crazy nervous. <laughs> I was so nervous, all these big stars that uh, had won, won things with, with club uh, many times and yeah, just had these name, names. But one thing is always to have just a name. They also had this type of aura, like a, a winner type of aura. And um, I had had and have huge respect for, for all of them. Um, and, uh, and that as well felt somehow overwhelming. And I just thought that I have to give it time. Go in easy, you know, like find your place, that's it. Uh, but I also felt that they were, they were very welcoming. Um, and um, yeah, an honor to play with all of them. The handball is a team sport, of course, the teammates are really important. A locker, a good locker, a healthy locker room is uh, really, really good uh, and a, uh, a need for the successful team. Which uh, ever of your teammates were the most uh, affected by you? So who was the one who were you were learning a lot? Uh, because of course, during your fantastic career, really big names you have been playing together. But who are those ones? Maybe let's say three who are uh, affecting you the most as a oh, player? That is a very difficult question, I must say. <laughs> uh, I, I played with so many amazing players and, and inspiring persons. Um, oh, that's hard. <laughs> uh, but right away, just when you, when you mentioned uh, Eduard Amorim, uh, without a doubt, Duda, she, uh, she had some kind of aura that I admired a lot and that I somehow learned a lot from in the way of um, trying to, you can be vulnerable, but you never show weakness somehow. And that I, she was someone who stepped very forward when it comes to that. Of course, with my national team, I also had uh, had so many players. Uh, yeah. When I when I got in, some of these uh, huge names like uh, Gro Hammersheng, uh, Dean, she was there at that point. I uh, in my role as a captain, I I got in there with Karolina Dyrebreivang at that point. Like she she taught me a lot in in this whole like captain role. Um, I also thought that yeah, like you said, Nikki Groth, what an inspiring and like strong person and player she was. So. 
Oh, yeah. Difficult to mention, obviously. Yes, I I want to say a lot more, but I'm gonna gonna stop there. But I'm I'm very thankful for uh, for a bunch of them. And also the coaches has been a lot of effect, uh, made a lot of effect on you. And for seven years or more many years in these seven years in Gure, you were working with as a Nordic player with a Spanish coach. It's a typical different style of handball they play with Ambrose Martin. How was uh, to work with Ambrose? Uh, when I arrived here, that was also one of the one of the things that I I was the most excited about. Uh, Ambrose, he he always had some kind of uh, yeah special aura around him. Um, he of course had one with the gear, and he he had this type of Spanish handball that I also were really interested in and wanted to learn a lot from. Uh, so for me to manage to to have that first year with a coach like him, that was it was ideal for me and. Um, yeah, uh, it was it was very inspiring to me, and I was uh, I was happy at that point that it was exactly him that was here. Learning a bit from a different handball culture, like Ambrose's Spanish culture, mm -hmm. made you more complex as a player. Yeah, I think so, and I also think that for sure with all these years, I've I've been mostly an attack player, uh, but. I think that he was maybe the one, the the one coach that that started to develop me the most as a little as a defense player as well. Like I said, I'm still mostly attacking. Like that's that's kind of where uh, where people see me as as yeah, where I have the the main focus in that way. But I also enjoy a lot uh, learning a little more from there and also showing there that uh, size maybe doesn't always matter. Sometimes it does there, but <laughs> <laughs> not always. And uh, and. With that, that's something that, that for sure, uh, yeah, I felt it took me a little further. Speaking, we are, we are not only speaking about, uh, of course, uh, Gjör and the clubs and also national team, but about the coaches. I have to admit that it seems to be a really special relation between you and Torrier. Watching you uh, during many uh, Euros or World Championships, uh, how is your relation with him? How do you feel uh, himself? He's, for me, from outside, it seems to be that he's a bit of father of all of you. I, I think that I, I have a lot to to thank Torir for, to be honest. He chose to he chose to put me in at a very young age. Um, also during the years when I didn't play so much, he he always kind of had a plan for me, and I felt that it was yeah he wanted me to be on those steps. And um, yeah, where maybe many others thought that maybe she's too small, maybe she's this and that. That that I never felt from him. He he had some kind of faith in it, and um, and I have yeah, a huge respect for that man. It's a difficult question. We are not closing nothing now, but of course I cannot miss the question: that what are the most remembering moments from your career? If I want to ask you, you have some time to think mm -hmm. from your Gjör career right mm. now, from the clubs of Gjör. What do you think? What are the most remembering? Maybe Champions League victory or, or what? What is that? One? I think that these big titles, it always comes up right away. So winning Champions League for the first time, winning it the year after, that was it was incredible. Uh, so for sure, those are the things that are are like hanging the highest. But I also have a few other, you know, games that were close that we won uh, just by a little, that we came back, or you know, there there are a lot of these moments. Um, I also think that just to play in this arena, in those most important games, um, that is also something that I will take with me for the rest of my life. Um, so, so yeah, I have I have many more moments that kind of stand out to me. Uh, but of course, winning these huge titles, that's something. The first Champions League victory is something extra for you? Yeah, somehow it is. It is something about this first time you managed to, to win something, and especially when I also uh, played quite a lot and were a big part of the team, so, so yes. I can ask you now to make a, a bit betting, or let's say me a number. How many games do you think you have played ever until this moment? We are shooting <laughs> the 20, uh, 2024 January uh -huh. in the in the green white jersey of your. Say me a number. N number of matches. Yes, just the matches number. Uh, oh. Seven season we are speaking yeah, about. Seven seasons. What can that be then? So, in national team, I played a little over 250 games. That's of yes. course over more years, but it's <laughs> a lot less games like per year. Uh, <laughs> then I would say maybe a little more than that. Yeah, but 300? 
Well, uh, exactly, 200? exactly. 267 yeah, games in yeah. the leagues yeah. and Champions mm -hmm. League, Hungarian League and Hungarian Cup, mm -hmm. but not counting. Uh, additionally, we have to say the preparation games. Mm -hmm. So you are over 300. Yeah. This is a perfect guess. <laughs> and um, I just want to share you one information. Maybe you don't know this, but you are with this number on the 10th position of the ever all over ranking of the club. What does it mean for you? Ooh, that? That's huge, actually. That's yeah, that's huge. And uh, what does it mean for you? So, of course, I know that this is match by match. We are living in a daily routine, mm -hmm. but uh, this means that you, of course, not just with your personality and with your results, but you are writing yourself into the books of Eto history. Yeah, that's that's pretty amazing, I think. Uh, like I started with, this was always my, my dream club as a, as a young player. And to be able to actually reach that and being able to be in a club like this where that has been so stable on the top for for yeah over a decade um that's uh, that's something special so yeah i'm proud of that <laughs> <laughs> and this is uh, what you build also stone by stone in the past yeah. in the seventh season that you are spending here one more guess i want you to make it's a bit easier mm -hmm. because it has been a very nice anniversary not so much later but how many goals do you think you have been scored <laughs> yeah i heard that it was over 1000 that's uh, yes. so that i know um it's not so long ago so i didn't score that many since that time so yeah right on uh, right, right over a thousand then yes 1060 <laughs> currently until the f uh, first days of January until Sevehof mm -hmm. game we can say and I can say to you that you are the sixth uh, on the list and you can overtake soon uh, a national team player from Norway Heidi Ooh. Lecke because Oi. it's only 32 <laughs> goals <laughs> but she's in front of you but of course if you want the numbers because I collected all the numbers from your Hungarian Cup Champions League games I'm interested I'm, I'm sure uh, sharing with you so but it's a uh, it's huge numbers of course I do not want to bore you with this <laughs> but I mean you are also in a very very nice place on the history of the club in the number of the matches in the scored uh, goals Unfortunately, Anita Gurbic, you cannot reach because she is almost 4,000. You know 000. what? That's the right thing. <laughs> she should always be on the top. That's that's like that's so fine. <laughs> this is clear. She mm. is she is dear and she is yes, the she legend is. of the club. But now a bit turning back to the national team because it's also really difficult to ask you this question. But what are the nicest memories from the national team? I just collected and it was difficult to write down that mm. three times World Championship uh, victory, uh, two times the Silver Medal in World Championship, five times European Champion, two times Olympic bronze medal with the national team. Can it be one memory or some few memories which are the best? I think that the, the gold that we took in the European Championship here in Hungary in 2014 always is kind of stands out a little for me. Uh, the reason for that is that that was the first championship where I really played a lot. Um, it was a year where a lot of where a lot of these old uh, players that had been there for, for many years and playing really good for many years, they were out. So there were questions around how, how good we would actually be. And we, we still managed to, to, reach, uh, to reach the top. Um, as always in Hungary, it's, it's an incredible audience. So like to play in Budapest this final as well, that was yeah, 2014, that's, that's something special. And then I also think that 2021 was also it was a very special uh, world championship for us when we won there. In Spain, mm -hmm. exactly. And I mentioned that in Olympics, two um, medals, but it's not the brightest. It's a bronze, uh, both of them, it's a bronze medal. I think that is it something you still miss? And is it an Olympic year 2024 in Paris? Is it a big aim, a big target for you and for the national team? And you personally? Yeah, of course. It's. It's the it is the, the the biggest in that matter, of course, an Olympic gold medal. It it doesn't get bigger than that on a national team uh, level. Um, so that is that is kind of the ultimate dream. I also think that over the years um, to win also two bronze medals that that is actually that means a lot to me as well. And I think that for every year and respecting the level and respecting all these big competitions and the difficulties that they have. Um, I also put them very highly and I think that for some years maybe maybe I was also a little too obsessed with this idea that that it has to be a gold medal there. But of course it, it is still the last thing missing so... Um, big I'm focus on this. Big focus. <laughs> Dior is a multicultural club so a lot of players from a lot of nations are coming and sometimes it happens that your teammate is your opponent on the national team competition. Is it advantage that you know them very well or a disadvantage or how do you uh, catch this topic that 
for example, with Estel uh, in the last time in the World Championship final, you played against each other, you know each other really well, you spend many time together, especially uh, you both of the playmakers of the team. It's a special relationship. How do you live these kind of matches when it's a teammate is your biggest opponent? It is some kind of bit weird to have these <laughs> situations uh, in the club. That's where you live your everyday life and, and you see all of these girls constantly work for the same things together constantly and then suddenly you're, you're like the, the biggest rivals. So uh, it is weird. Uh, but at the same time, I also think that we, from the very beginning, it was always like that. It, it had this kind of dynamics. I never know really who has the, um, yeah, the, the advantage, to be honest, because uh, sometimes when, when I feel like, yeah, we have the advantage, then suddenly it turns and like now, Estelle was, uh, was on the winning team and had, a, had an amazing championship. So hard to say where the advantage com comes from, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's weird to, to play against someone that you, like so much and adore so much and that you actually wish everything well for except when you would like to win yourself instead. <laughs> it's amazing what you are speaking about of course <laughs> it's a mix of emotions yes. and um, I want to get know your opinion about it that representing a nation in the national team is fantastic but leading the national team as a captain is also something and you are lucky to be the national uh, the captain of the Norwegian national team what does it mean for you how difficult it is? First of all, of course, it, it means a lot to me. Uh, it is a special honor, like you say, to, to actually have this type of, of role uh, in your national team for your country. So that is something that, that comes with a little extra pressure, but also a lot of pride somehow. Um, I've been at now since 2015, so it starts to be a lot of years as well that I had this role. Um, and as, as with everything, uh, it comes with, with both sides. Like I said, I, I, there were many times when I, when I also felt the pressure extra because of it. I felt a lot, I felt very, maybe over responsible. I put more into it than what was necessary. Uh, but at the same time, it also, it also made me, I don't know, step a little out of my comfort zone and, and become maybe something become something as a person that I wouldn't have been without or at least something that would have taken me a lot longer to become. So, um, so I'm also sure that looking back it, it taught me a lot and it still, it still is. Um, so yeah. Of course it's not a big secret, we can speak honestly about it right now that after Anita Gorbic uh, retired it has been a wish from Dior uh, also to promote you as a as a captain of the team but somehow at the end you just you were not the captain it became Annemette Hansen mm -hmm. and then you were a part of the captain's team this was um, three players why uh, you didn't want it to be the captain of the team maybe it was too much both or what was the reason there were actually m more things that that kind of went into that thought process and and decision for me uh, first of all to to even get this suggested again that actually that made me so happy and in that way I also didn't want to to disappoint anyone at the same time when this question came at that point I wasn't completely sure how my career would look for the next years uh, I went through a lot of things thinking like about when it comes to family like there were many questions to me um, that I was a little unsure about I I also had that responsibility for so many years with national team. I know myself and I know that I take it very seriously and that I take it with, sometimes I, like, I overdo it a little. I, I put more maybe thoughts and, and effort into it than what is really necessary. Uh, and with that, I just thought that, I think that Gjør will have a better version of me, a better playing Stine. Uh, with me being in the captain's team, but not necessarily kind of being the one who, yeah, out would be the face as the captain. Um, I actually don't think that my role is very different within the team. Uh, I, and that I also said right away that I would like to still be the same type of person for this team and to be a leader and to, to go in front and to take responsibility. So I will, I will never back down on these things. But it was more about what was healthy for, for myself in the total picture, also not really 
being sure about the next years of, of my own career. So it was actually to, to be the best version of myself that I could be also for this club. It seems to be, and of course, from outside that you are a true leader in the court. That's why you are a national team uh, and the captain. And also it's clear that even that you are not the captain, but you are the leader of the team. Is it also in the private life? So <laughs> when it's uh, free times, Tina is also deciding <laughs> everything or how it goes. Uh, or you um, feel it better if someone else <laughs> is doing this? No, but I, I've, always been, I've always been very thorough and I've, I am a little of a perfectionist. So I, I like to be in control. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt about that. I, I for sure still respect that others also take responsibility and, and that I, I'll gladly share it. So it's not like that. It's not like I want to be bossy or anything. <laughs> I like to be in control <laughs> and that I somehow yeah, get a little more with these type of roles. So when it's a holiday, then you decide where you go <laughs> yeah, and what I you will check? 100%. <laughs> <laughs> For sure I do. <laughs> About the nice things and the nice moment, of course, and everybody identify you like, like a, a smiling wonder because of course you are a, not just a amazing person, an amazing athlete and of course all the opponents are respecting you. But of course we have to admit that there have been some difficult moments as it's always been in the life. It has been really difficult moments. We can manage just to say um, a lost World Championship final you had. Also lost uh, Champions League final. You have been also a part of this one. Of course the Olympic dream which is uh, of course after a many Euro and World Championship to win and you didn't win it. or if we don't go so much fa back and it was difficult for me to see uh, you after a match your game uh, when it was in the last seconds a, a, a mistake which happens every day and you were crying mm -hmm. a lot it's difficult mm -hmm. for me to see you are crying but what were your your difficult moments what you can identify as it was mm, yeah but you of course mentioned a lot of these situations that that are the hardest one as an athlete i think like Having a little more perspective, seeing here now, not filled with all these emotions, I also think that is exactly how sport should be. Um, sport would never be interesting if it weren't a good level, you know, and if it were the same ones always winning with, with a bunch of goals. It's supposed to be even at the top and it's supposed to be difficult. And I also think that it, that is what makes it even better when you manage and when you actually win those type of things. Um, in the moment, <laughs> no doubt, then suddenly it feels, then it feels like it's everything as well, you know, like sport, it's, it's, it's nothing, but it's everything all at the same time. And I think that's also why we, why we all love it so much that it is like the, you feel at the bottom when you, when you lose and when you're not satisfied with, with yourself and when you don't manage what you kind of work for every single day. I, I live here for, for a reason. I, I live away from my friends, from my family, my boyfriend to achieve some goals and like to do this with the, the group that I have here and with the fans that we have in the arena, with the club. So when you then don't manage, it, it feels like everything. Um, and I, like I said, I think that's, that's somehow the beauty of sport. It is brutal when it is brutal, but it is also the best when it's the best. Um, so, so yeah, looking back, I kind of enjoy all of these ups and downs being in it. I hate it. So <laughs> it's, uh, time yeah. is making better exactly. things. Exactly. <laughs> Stine, when, a, when a difficult days were coming, after a lost final, after a defeat, after, and you can have also a bad day, of course, this is a part of the human being. How could you work it out from yourself? How did you came out from the, from the bottoms? Because sometimes we are not always on the top and sometimes we visit the bottom also. How do you pull yourself up? What is, what make you more comfortable, more better? How, what are your practices? Uh, if I'm going to be completely honest, like right away after these losses and the days after, I'm, I'm quite self-destructive. Like I, uh, I put a lot of responsibility on myself. I blame myself a lot. I struggle to sleep. Like it's for me, it's very, it's very overwhelming in those moments. But also, I think that from from that, it comes from knowing that it is important to me and to us. And, uh, and also knowing that you're, you're very often the most disappointed when you are, when you're not satisfied with your team's performance, your own performance. So when you actually know that if you had only done this or that, you could have had a chance. So it comes from a point where you, you know what you are able to do. 
you just didn't manage to get it out right there and because someone else were actually better. Um, and I think there comes the whole development part. And I think for my whole career to focus on, to focus on like the small things, to like keep trying to improve, that was actually where my, my main motivation also came from. Um, so yeah, we, <laughs> we live as long as we learn. That's uh, what they say, very cliche, but, I, but I, I think it's also very important to kind of acknowledge these things and, and to, um, yeah, to keep creating processes that also when, you, also when you lose, when you win and when you lose. So who is the person you speak in the most? Father, boyfriend? Yeah, boyfriend, without a doubt. He's uh, for the years that that we've been together. Actually, we've been together as long as I played here. So uh, <laughs> it's soon, soon seven years as well. So he's he's my uh, yeah my very closest one. If you can go back to the time, you have a time machine, and you can change something in your past, what would it be? Good question. Oh, that's very hard. <laughs> no, but I I really believe that the whole. The whole road is created because of the good and the bad things, like the regrets that I might have, and, and there sure are some. There's sure a situation that I wish that I handled differently, uh, if that's on the court or off the court or in, in my private life, like no matter what it is. But I also think that that kind of created me along the road and it creates like a, a, final, a final route. Um, I don't think it's supposed to be perfect anyway. Um, so, so yeah, um, of course there are small things that I wish were different, uh, but maybe, maybe it would have looked uh, very different now in the end as well, and, and that I don't want. Please clarify me something, 2018, Eva Kish is saving the ball in the Champions League final and we won it, you won it, and then you are one of the first who is hugging Eva with amazing smile. How do you remember for this case? <laughs> uh, yeah, how do I remember that? No, but it was, uh, it was just, it had been such a close game, like every final four, it, it, it's, it's, the, it's the best level you, you can reach uh, in, in handball. Um, and then to, to actually have this type of game, going to, to overtime, uh, like making some mistakes, and then she managed to have this, this last save and just like, now it's ours. What a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, it was a bit help for you because it was really difficult seconds before the end and mm. you were so happy mm. that she had for you, yes? For sure, for sure. She was a saving angel at that point. A bit going into the details, um, of course, a lot of players are l using nowadays social media really often and with uh, many purposes, but you are a bit less active on this reason. What is the reason for this? Um, in one way, maybe I screwed up a little, maybe I should have, <laughs> should have used the potential a little more. Like there lies so many great things in social media uh, to promote yourself and to promote, to promote the team. So maybe, maybe I'll look back and think why. But no, actually for me, it was a lot about what is the best way for me to, as a person, as a handball player, to, to kind of feel the most comfortable as possible. and and to do what is right for me. And that was always kind of to, to stay more, more private. I think that there, uh, like I said, there are a lot of good things, but there, there's also a lot of noise uh, on social media and to be, to be open and to, to have all of these opinions everywhere. Um, be very, also to just, um, yeah, that it's, that it's easy for people to kind of, to know even more about you and get very, very close. I kind of wanted to be a little more in control of that too. And it just felt very right for me as, as a person, as, as the way I like to be and who I am. And also, yeah, as a humble player to also keep, keep it a little calmer. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy about that. As handball player, as stars, uh, you are idle and of course a bit your na uh, days are like open book because of the lot of travelings and if not yours then the clubs or the national team social media is bringing infos. But how much privacy is important for you and what do you do in your private time which is filling you up? Mm. Uh, yeah, for me it's, it's, it's very important and like I said to, to kind of keep uh, sane and to, to stay who I want to be, for me it was, it was easier to just do it like that. I might have been just as happy if I didn't, but it was just a decision that I chose to, to kind of yeah, have some kind of distance. I think, it's, I think it's healthy somehow, at least it was for me. 
Um, in my private life, yeah, I, I, uh, I really enjoy these uh, these simple everyday life thing things. I, I love to read. I love to go for a good cup of coffee. I love to watch a good movie. I love to hang out with uh, with friends. So I'm very I'm very normal. <laughs> Uh, this is my next question that uh, I often see during the travels that you don't open the tablet then you open a book on the plane or on the bus. Um, the reading is something that makes your brain a bit closed and then you can relax? Yeah, it, it does. I, I enjoy so much to, to kind of put my, yeah, put my brain off without it being completely off somehow. I think that after many years when I stopped uh, studying um, I was watching so much, uh, so many shows, like so many movies. I still enjoy that, but I, I, and I think it's it's good for me to to kind of, um, yeah, to use my brain a little more actively as well. It's not that everything I read is very smart, and <laughs> that's very. I read like a very wide range of books, um, but I, I relax very well with it, and I and yeah, I, I like to to be a little switched on as well. This is the part when you as an idol now uh, call the focus for reading is important. But now you mentioned the book. Which books do you read? What are your favorites? I know you get from me one uh, <laughs> yes. good book, <laughs> yes. but what you are reading if you can. Ooh, uh, like I said, I actually I enjoy a lot to read a lot of different things. Uh, I think also my boyfriend, he also enjoys a lot reading. He kind of expanded my horizon a little, which was really nice for me as well. Uh, so uh, so I, I enjoy everything from like historical fiction to memoirs to um, these normal drama uh, books. So it's yeah, it's 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 a little wide, but right now I'm reading uh, one book of uh, or it's a, tr a trilogy, trilogy, that's how you say it, from this uh, Haruki Murakami, a Japanese uh, author, 1Q84. So that's what I'm on right now. Wow. Um, so, so yeah, wide range. <laughs> a favorite writer? Oh, difficult. No, that I actually don't know. It's, I, I didn't read so much of one author consistently, but at least I know that I want to read more from this uh, Murakami, he wrote a lot, but... Um, no, I have more maybe favorite books than I have favorite authors. How uh, you are with the music? Uh, do you have some favorite music? What you are, what make you relax also next to the reading? I, I enjoy a lot to have music on, and I uh, when I when I'm in, at home, like either I read or or music is basically on while while I'm doing things. But I'm very like they're quite mainstream, and I I like it probably a little more calm than <laughs> than than what we have in the locker room at least. <laughs> do you play any instruments? Maybe no, I don't. Nothing. Never. I wished I did actually, but no, nothing. Okay, it's 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 something maybe you can yeah, you can maybe. Uh, <laughs> improve in the maybe future. Maybe the next thing. Um, Stina, what if not handball? Which sport would you choose, like to do or just to watch or just to follow? Um, yeah, if not handball, I, I think that tennis is a really cool sport. It's not anything that I that I really watched a lot, but I just when I watched it, I think it it has it has a lot. Beach volleyball, like <laughs> that's that's also very cool. I I had many summers uh, playing a, a lot of beach volleyball, but um, yeah, in general, like when when the Olympics is on, like you can basically watch everything. So I enjoy that a lot. But but for sure, I'm a little more on this like summer Olympic part than than the winter Olympic part. I enjoy to watch it, but as a Norwegian, I should probably uh, yeah maybe I should have answered. Uh, yeah, cross-country skiing, but uh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, Stine, uh, it's already been seven years you are living uh, in Hungary. This is the longest ever you have been lived, uh, uh, except of Norway, of course. But how do you feel yourself in Hungary? How do you feel yourself in your, in, si in the city? Yeah, this is my seventh year and I think that says a lot already that it's, um, it's a place that I, I really enjoyed living. Uh, my everyday life here has been has been great. It's uh, it's not the biggest city, but at the same time, it's it's a city where you have everything you need. Uh, it's close to everything, and it's also quite close to three big capitals. So, um, yeah, my everyday life here and and this um, this life I I enjoyed here in Hungary has been uh, has been great. Is it something that uh, you are, you will have also have good memory about it? So it's something that you are living here in a good way. So you like it? Yeah, I really like it. I, I do for sure. I uh, yeah, the years I spent here, I I'll always look back at it and, and think of it as something very positive and positive, not only humble wise but also uh, 
in the, in the everyday life. This is a bit special season. In, before the season, we heard a lot of news about your future, about your career. And of course, somebody say, as Neville, we finish your career. Somebody said that oh, we don't know it for sure. So uh, there has been an interview that after the World Championship, you will say something. And uh, we are here right now after the World Championship. Uh, just a yes or no. <laughs> is it clearly known what you will do after the end of the season? It is quite clear. <laughs> Still? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but I, I know that I will not sign a contract for. Uh, f yeah, I will not prolong with uh, with Gjord, and that's not because I'm going anywhere else. This would be my first question. Yes. Uh, so I am taking a break. Um, it's most likely uh, also a complete stop of my career. Um, I like to kind of keep it open a little. I've seen many players that, that have a break and actually miss it so much that they choose to come back and find a way uh, to do that. Um, but as it looks right now, it still, still feels very right for me to, to kind of put, put a final end on it uh, here in this club, but also in my professional career. Why do you make this decision? I know that it's uh, tough, seven years. But and sometimes it's tiring and, and sometimes even you smile, you can be also really much tired. Lot of games you play, lot of trainings. Are you a bit tired or what is the reason behind it? Yeah, I am a bit tired. I think that some of my I still have a few goals from this last season that I that I really look forward to, that I really work for. So it's not that I have this lack of motivation for, for a few things that are still left. But I also feel that I am kind of full of things and I was over these last years. I was lucky enough to play everything all the time. I, I was very little injured, which has been such a privilege. Like mix of me being in good shape and taking care, but also probably a lot of luck as well. Um, but that also made it kind of a. It, I have been doing a lot, <laughs> and I never had. I never had a break, and I never could kind of breathe for real, I feel. Um, I wouldn't have wanted it in any other way. So I'm not saying it in, in the way that I complain at all because it was absolutely ideal. Uh, I couldn't have wanted it to be better. Um, but at some point, it's also something about being, okay, now I, I need something to, to change and I, and I also, I also want to be closer to my to my boyfriend, uh, to have more time with him, with my family, with my friends. Um, it's my 11th season uh, abroad, um, so it's it's been it's been such a ride, such an amazing ride. Um, but yeah, I feel I feel full and very satisfied in that way. It's a bit on the way of unusual decision that. Sorry to be unpolite and manage uh, and mention your age, but at the age of 33, you can still have a lot of time to play on the highest level. Um, maybe uh, family reasons also became more because, of course, we, you know that we are fiancé, and maybe it will be a marriage also soon. Or how is the private part? If you can share with us, yeah, for sure. Uh, of course, that that is such a big part of the whole of the whole equation as well. It, it, without any doubt, um, it is something about like actually creating this family life that I that I really want uh, and that I'm missing a lot now. Um, maybe uh, for some other girls, they manage to have their their man here uh, or their uh, yeah their loved ones with them a little closer. Maybe I could have played longer then, but but in our cases, we have two separate careers, and and I also feel that uh, I played everything I ever wished to play, uh, especially now counting one last one last uh, Champions League here with Gjord, one last Olympics with national team. Um, and then it, it just feels like the, the right thing to do and the right uh, timing. I also prefer to, to stop a little on, on top. I, uh, I, I like a lot that, I'm, that, I'm, that I know that I, I could still do more, but um, I, I also would like to be remembered at, as what I am now and what I have been and not what might have come. Was it a difficult decision to make? In one way, yes. Uh, in one way, it's it's crazy. 
<laughs> difficult and it's so scary like this has been my life i feel like i've been living as a professional handball player since i was 13 years old like it's always been about this um so in that way it's it's so scary this is what i'm good at and this is the environment that i have and so many of my friends are here and it's so it's it's very overwhelming in that way to to actually just from one day to another i'm gonna cut out uh, the life that I know in many ways. Um, on the other hand, uh, it has also been a long thought pro process for me. Uh, I had a lot of time to think and I, and there are many factors that also makes it easy in that way because it also, it feels right because of those things too. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm so scared sometimes too. <laughs> um, as a professional handball player, it feels something finished at the summer uh, when the Olympics is over. Let's say now it's clearly out, as you told. Are you afraid about being just Stina Oftedal, the human being, the lady or the wife or uh, what will come after handball? Um, yeah, in, in one way, a little, not so much. Maybe more about my own, my own feeling about myself. I, uh, it is something about to, to feel that you're good in something, that you are appreciated in a certain way and, and yeah, and that will somehow also go away right away when I, when I stop. Um, but I also, luckily, I, I like the human that I am as well. I hope and think that this type of life will actually give me so many things too. And I'm also in many ways quite excited to not not needing to be as selfish as an athlete needs to be. Um, I'm very, yeah, I'm, I'm also very excited to put that kind of pressure away in one way, but also just as much this, okay, it, it, I don't have to do exactly this just because I need to be ready for that. It would be a little nice to, to kind of, yeah, take that off somehow. How do you see yourself in, a, in the midterm in three, five years? Maybe you plan yourself to be a mom, to have a baby, or what are you in private plans if we can know about it? Uh, that is, of course, uh, something that I would really, would really hope and, and wish for. Uh, I think that you, you never know what the future holds in, in that way, but, uh, but of course, I would, I would love to be a, a mom at some point. In the mid-term, in long-term, 10, 15 years distance, uh, do you see yourself somehow connected to the handball or do you have some totally private plans? I'm actually not sure there. Uh, in one way, I, I still have a lot of love for this sport. Uh, this sport. I, I think handball is such a cool and dynamic <laughs> game sport. Um, so in that way, I, uh, I wouldn't mind being connected to it. I think that I could maybe at least offer a lot of things when it comes to maybe helping some young players maybe work within some kind of leadership things uh, so yeah may maybe maybe something related to humble i don't see myself in a direct like coach role that i don't do but but i think they're an in sport how it develops as well uh, if you see nfl for example they also have these mentors like special coaches um, maybe that would be something i, w I would enjoy um, but yeah i'm not sure maybe not either <laughs> Now that uh, more or less it's sure that, that you finish then your career, uh, if you check it back you, to your career, does it something missing or, or you see it like, like a, even that we don't know the end of the last season, mm. but is it something a full, a circle that, 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 that you are satisfied with? Of course, you could say that uh, just title wise, uh, an Olympic gold would be the full circle. Then that would be the, the final achievement and the final dream to, to really have accomplished all I could ever dream of. Um, at the same time, I still think that if that doesn't happen, uh, there are so many good other nationalities that will try to fight for the exact same. I still feel that I, um, yeah, I, I have to just look back at, at this career with, with the most content. Uh, I, actually, I, never, I never thought I would manage to, to achieve that many things and to be in all of those teams that I were and win all those titles and also have that role that I wished for in these teams. Um, so yeah, uh, in one way that could maybe on paper conclude it perfectly, but I, I will still look back 
and seeing it as a yes yeah, some kind of fairy tale <laughs> where will be the place for hungary and for you in your heart when you will finish huge place it was for sure it was for sure the club that kind of pulled me to the to the last like took me the last step uh, into this international um, yeah this international level like on this everyday basis um, like I said seven years uh, in a country in a city in a club that's that's actually a quite big part of of my life so far and it will always be so it will always have a, have a very special place in my uh, in my heart my final question at the end of the long interview this season is the end is yet to come. What will be the motivation? What do you want to achieve? <laughs> I would, of course, love to manage to take one more Champions League title with uh, with Jör, with Eto. That would be uh, incredible. Um, to have also another chance of of reaching the very top in the Olympics. That's the next one. And then I also have like a last thing where I just want to kind of enjoy also this last part of it to to kind of take in the the good things maybe also sometimes the bad in a very in maybe a more reflected way that i managed uh, throughout the other years um to enjoy my teams and and what those things bring me and to when i run into this arena look around and think like that this was always special to me and that will always be special to me that i uh, yeah, that is something like on the personal level that I that I hope that I can embrace even more maybe for these last months. Stina, thank you very much for your interview and I just only wish to have all your dreams fulfilled in the season and not just in the season but also later on in the private life. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.